Hey, what's up everybody? This is Muth24, and today I'm taking a look at the first volume of the Marvel Now Nova series. Uh, this is a series that I kind of was on the fence about for a little bit there. I wanted to get into some more Cosmic Marvel stuff, like I mentioned with the Guardians of the Galaxy series, but I had heard some kind of mixed things about the new Nova stuff, and I wanted to read the old Nova uh, comics as well, which I have everything from the Annihilation line now that I got the Annihilation Omnibus uh, earlier this week. So I'll do a review of that at some point. Uh, all like almost 10 pounds of that thing, because it's super huge and heavy. But, um, anyways, this is the, the new stuff. There's a new Nova, and uh, as with all the Marvel Now stuff, it's sort of intended to be a story that readers can jump into a lot easier. Now, they do expand upon the mythos, I guess, or the, the operatings of the Nova Corps in this new storyline. There's a whole new division of the Nova Corps that we never knew about before, and they are sort of like this Black Ops type group where they take on missions that, you know, were never written down on paper and uh, go into really dangerous territory. And it's usually, like, small teams. Uh, they're very tactical, very much hit-and-run type groups. And that's why the Nova design here is much different than the gold helmet and sort of, like, black navy-ish uh, suit that Richard Ryder wore. So this costume, I really like it. Uh, I wasn't sure how much I was going to like it at first, but uh, the fact that it's more of a rounded look, I guess... Uh, obviously the helmet's basically the same, but you have these like gold gauntlet pieces. Um, the chest piece is more of a classic Nova, uh, like it was you know back in the day. Uh, it's just a really cool combination. I have it even darker colors than what you know the previous Novas wore with the more blue uh, color scheme there. So the main character of this is Sam Alexander. Now one thing that people had said was that they didn't like the fact that it was such a young kid that had taken on the role of Nova, uh, whereas Richard Ryder was a little bit older. But I think it makes for an interesting uh, contrast there, I guess. I mean, I've only read so much of the Richard Ryder story at the moment. I haven't finished the Annihilation Omnibus. Uh, but whereas he's sort of a hero thrust into the situation after the rest of the Nova Corps gets wiped out, uh, this Nova is kind of following in his father's footsteps. His dad was a Nova, and then he sort of just thinks all these stories his dad's telling him are made up, or that his dad's losing it, or whatever. Um, and clearly his dad is sort of depressed and, like, missing the glory days of being a Nova, but uh, it, it's it's interesting to see, like, this kid, you know, doubt kind of everything that his dad tells him, and then when the time comes, realize, oh, wait, he was actually telling the truth. There's this whole galaxy out there that I didn't know about. There's all these crazy things, like talking raccoons and walking trees, you know. Um, so there's some crossover there with the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff, and that's sort of how Sam gets to... Uh, become initiated into the whole role of, a, role of a hero. Now, one thing that I do really like about this story, uh, that I think they've been incorporating more into more recent Marvel stuff, is the fact that it's not this whole big deal of, how am I going to hide my secret identity? Like, people know that he's Nova. It's it's no big secret. And I, I'm glad that we've gotten past that point where we need to come up with some, uh, you know, alter ego and cover story for literally every superhero when you have hundreds of them running around now. Uh, it, it seems a little ridiculous that someone wouldn't have noticed that all these kids and, and adults are, you know, superpowered beings uh, at some point there. The fact that he is a kid does sort of give him qualities that remind me a little bit of Spider-Man, uh, older Spider-Man stuff, where you know he's got to deal with his, his school life and his role as a Nova. Um, but he's also sort of a stranger in a strange land there because even when Richard Ryder was thrust into the role of being a Nova, he kind of got used to the whole cosmic side of things pretty fast. You know, he teams up with Drax there for a little bit, uh, and then we eventually move into stuff like Guardians of the Galaxy, Thanos Imperative, etc., etc. Uh, with this, it's Sam trying to grasp everything that's going on around him, like his dad up and disappearing, um, <coughs> some run-ins with people from his dad's past and from the uh, other cosmic Marvel stuff, like Rocket Raccoon and Gamora are both in this, and the fact that they are both wearing their outfits from the uh, Annihilation Guardians of the Galaxy stuff uh, leads me to believe that this first volume, at least, is set somewhere between the Thanos Imperative and the first volume of the new Guardians of the Galaxy stuff, because Star-Lord is not present, and they talk about Richard Rider's disappearance or, or being trapped on the other side of the Cancerverse fault there uh, as being something still relatively recent on the, the minds of uh, Gamora and Rocket. So it's an interesting little point in the in the timeline there, I guess. 
but it does serve its purpose well as sort of a springing off point of, you know, something brand new here, easy to jump into, and very interesting because we do get this whole new division of the Nova Corps that we didn't know about before. I love the cover art here. It's very simple, but I think it does its job well of sort of selling this as an exciting uh, storyline. We have some pretty cool art in here, too, and I really like how all of the um, uh, introduction pages to each new issue have this sort of, like, galaxy and cosmic nebula sort of thing there with the outline of, of Sam. Uh, as far as the rest of the art, it's it's well done. It's pretty typical of, uh, you know, more modern Marvel stuff. But here we have some of the other members of the Nova Corps and the little flashbacks there. And you have a couple of those throughout the course of the story where it flashes back to how things were before the, um, you know, before all the Nova Corps members got wiped out. Uh, but here we are with the Gamora and Rocket, you know, wearing their older costumes. Uh, and Sam sort of being introduced to his new role. And uh, there is some crossover with other characters in the Marvel Universe, like I mentioned, Rocket and Gamora. There's a couple of them that I won't spoil, but it does tie into some of the more recent um, Marvel storylines that are going on at the moment. Let's see if I can't find another artwork piece here that isn't spoilerish. Here's another little flashback piece, but we got some really cool action shots and, and energy blasts going off there, and so uh, I really enjoyed this. I, I'm a little surprised that it is so polarizing to some of the Marvel fans, and I, I guess I get it that, you know, he's not Richard Ryder, and their memories of, you know, of, of Richard's, for some readers, uh, is gonna sort of overshadow this new kid, but I think it was a really good story. It was it was better than I expected, actually, because going into this, I knew some people really didn't like it, so I was kind of wary, but um, I think I'm gonna follow the rest of the Nova stuff for a while here, and I'm really excited to see where they take this, because Guardians of the Galaxy, I love the team-based aspect, but Nova with him crossing over with the Avengers, and with him crossing over with the Guardians, and other characters, it seems like it really, uh, really has a lot of potential uh, as far as what they can do with this, and Sam's just kind of a fun, goofy character, um, but he also knows what he's getting himself into most of the time, so uh, that's pretty much it for this review, and with that, I will see you guys next time.